It has taken a really long time, but like I said in my review of the Surface Laptop 7, this is the Snapdragon X Elite model, we have finally arrived at a place where Windows on ARM is pretty darn good. Most applications, not all, okay, big asterisk there, not all, but most applications that people use either run just fine through the Prism compatibility layer or they have a version that is built specifically for ARM. In this video, though, I want to kind of highlight what the difference is there just in general. We're going to use one application that I think is on a lot of people's minds right now simply because it was recently compiled for ARM. You have a great test that's really easy to do. I can install this app for x86, and you can do a very easy test and then install the ARM version and do the same. We're talking about CapCut. This is a free video editor that is quite popular, and so that's what we're going to do. That way, we can all just kind of see how big of a deal is that? How much performance are you losing when the app is not actually compiled for ARM? Now look, obviously, this is not going to be like a shorthand that you're going to be able to apply to everything. You can't say that, well, this is how CapCut compared one to the other, therefore we can extrapolate this across every possible program. No, this is only going to be applicable to cap cut, but I think it is still going to be rather interesting because it kind of can give you a general idea. Again, general idea. So as you just saw in real time here, I am installing the x86 version of cap cut. This is the most recent one that is in the store. It's either four or maybe it's 4.1. I don't actually remember. We'll check here in just a minute. You can see though for sure that this is running and it says architecture x64, which means this is not the ARM version. I just wanted to make that very, very clear. Let's go ahead and create a new project. We should be able to see here, yes, version 4.0. Move my webcam down there. We can see a little bit better. What I have here is a video file that I have already edited and posted, but I pulled it from my main computer over here. We're going to bring it into the timeline and we're just going to basically re-export it again. And we're going to time how long that takes. So let's drag this down. Do we have any sort of like lag or hesitation there? Yeah, it took a little bit of a second there, but overall, it's not horrible, right? Like, you can move through the timeline and play, jump ahead and play. I would say that's relatively smooth. Like, I have no major problems with that. But what we really need to check is how long does it take to export? So I have a stopwatch pulled up on my phone. We're going to come up here, and we're going to start this at 4K. And let's begin. And I'm not going to just sit here and make you watch this because it's going to take a little while. We will just skip ahead. We are, by the way, in the maximum performance mode, so keep that in mind. We'll skip ahead, and I'll tell you how long this took. So we are coming up on complete, and there is 100%, and we are sitting at 2 minutes and 34 seconds. Now, I want you to definitely keep that in mind. But I want you to also sort of just pay attention to these sorts of things. Like, let me just close cap cut out completely and let me just show you kind of how long it takes to open it, how long it takes to get into a project, so forth and so on. So pay attention to that speed, pay attention to that speed as well. Now what we need to do is we actually need to just close cap cut and we need to uninstall cap cut. And the reason is because we need to go to the Microsoft store and we need to install the version of CapCut that is found there. I've actually had a couple of people reach out to me and say, I installed CapCut and it says it's x86. And you would be absolutely correct if you're not getting it from the Microsoft Store. The version that installs here does in fact, or has in fact been compiled in ARM and we should see significantly better performance with it. Now I will also say, this app was broken until like two days ago. Or maybe I should say the laptops were broken. I don't know. There was a system update pushed through to these Copilot Plus PCs. My Surface Laptop 7 specifically got an update. I was then able to uninstall and then reinstall and CapCut from the store was able to launch. Prior to this, it would do the system check and then it would never actually open. And this was reported to me from several different people. I actually saw a few different Reddit threads talking about this as well. So this problem has been fixed. If you've tested it and it wasn't working, uninstall, reinstall, and you should be good to go. Skip ahead until I'm ready to run the test. 
keep things fair. Let's start fresh. We'll grab the file. Let's drag it down. Do we notice any delay similarly to what we had on the x86 version? That seemed fairly similar to me. Scrubbing through seems fairly similar as well. I'm not really seeing any major problems. Now we're going to go back into export, put it back on to 4K. Let's go ahead and hit start and start the timer. And once again, we'll skip ahead to the results. So we are done at a minute and 49 seconds. So that is a fairly decent improvement. It's not like earth shatteringly faster, but it definitely is faster. And I will tell you that as I was just sort of navigating around, like I'll just show you, like, let me just close CapCut completely and then we'll just open it back up. Like you'll be able to see how quickly it fires up, how quickly you get back into the project. That's where a lot of those speed improvements are going to be noticeable. It's when you're just like starting a new project or you're just doing anything in CapCut, it's just faster than the x86 version ever thought about being. I do also want to quickly point out that this section here in the settings that talks about encoding, decoding, using hardware, rendering with the GPU, that was enabled on both versions of the application. So in theory, all of this stuff should have been equal other than one was x86, one was ARM. All in all, I think that this is a pretty interesting result, guys, and it's not necessarily a shocking result. This is an ARM device, and it wants to run things in ARM. And if it's not, if it's something that's compiled for x86, it has to be run through a compatibility layer. It reminds me a lot of how the Steam Deck works, right? Where there are not games really made for Linux. They're made for Windows for the most part. They run through a compatibility layer called Proton, and then they run on the Steam Deck, and they run well enough, it's fine, but if the game was just straight up made for Linux, it's going to run better. And the same is going to be true on that Surface laptop. If the apps are made for that laptop, they're going to run quite a bit better. They're going to take advantage of the hardware much, much better. But again, if you have to run an x86 app, it's not the end of the world, but you will definitely notice some degradation. Hopefully now you have a general idea of what that's going to be like. And honestly... That's pretty representative for me. The x86 apps that I've tried on there, things like Streamlabs OBS, things like Discord, they are absolutely functional. You can absolutely use them. But just like CapCut, you're going to have a little bit of that hitchy stutteriness here and there. So keep that in mind. I hope this is some useful, beneficial information for those of you out there. Subscribe for more content just like this, guys. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.